Welcome to My on Mondays, an explorative approach to the possessive my through narratives, art, and sound. Each Monday brings a new creation and unique perspective. My on Mondays is brought to you by Ming Studios, a contemporary art space and international artist residency program dedicated to the exhibition, experience, and exploration of arts and culture. Along with exhibiting artists from around the world, Ming also serves the community by hosting innovative programs including performances, workshops, screenings, readings, artist talks, and other cultural activities. For more information or if you'd like to participate in Mayan Mondays, you can visit our website at mingstudios.org. Thank you so much for joining us for this, our very first episode. We're thrilled to be launching this program with a piece by Irina Novarese. Irina is a research-based artist whose practice expands to interdisciplinary and collaborative projects, both as artist and organizer. She received a BFA from the Academy of Arts in Turin, Italy, and an MA in Art in Context from UDK Berlin. Her work has been presented internationally, among others at the 2nd Ghetto Biennial in Haiti, the 10th Venice Architecture Biennial, and the Museo Romerillo during the 12th Havana Biennial. Irina has lived and worked in Berlin since 2000, and much of her work is influenced by urban space and the multiple contexts that grow within. Her piece is titled, My Concrete Mondays. The music in the background comes from the opening scene of Omega Man, a 1971 American post-apocalyptic action film, as described in Wikipedia, directed by Boris Sagal and starring Charlton Easton as a survivor of a global pandemic. The reference to the global pandemic is purely coincidental in this context. This sequence, and as I said, not the plot behind it, is a good image to refer for my passion for the cityscapes. A long drive in a concrete, only very urban space. The one of Los Angeles, city of cement par excellence, according to the theories of many, theories with which I find myself in perfect agreement. My father initiated me into the, shall we say, dynamic observation of buildings and urban spaces, which means that we were driving around, gazing at metropolitan vistas. It was my first trip to Berlin, the city where I decided to live years later. And Berlin is the city that perhaps I know best and from which I want to begin this journey of text, architecture, urban planning and poetry for you. I'll start with a quote from Dr. Ono Komer, Okoma, himself quoted by Mike Davis in his book, Planet of slums. We live in the age of the city. The city is everything to us. It consumes us, and for that reason, we glorify it. And I can tell you, I glorify the city. I love urban spaces and concrete interstices with their potential for public use. In 2018, I had worked on an installation titled The Fourth Wall, in which I had attempted to present a compilation of observation about the urban space we live in, 
the infrastructure that surround us and how the interstices created by these are used by those who need them to find shelter, a home. In this work, I wrote poems using a system that I like to call a bit Dadaist. The poems are composed using words fished out from different texts such as Architecture and Violence, edited by Bashir Kenzari. The result of her own observation, suspended from aesthetic consideration, the new concrete, more experimental wretched infrastructure offered a variety of housing. New units had to be provided, vehicles for dreams with higher social impact. In the chapter written by Donald Kunze, titled The Topography of Fear, Architectures, Fourth Walls and Inside Frames, I found an image that opened my eyes and my thoughts. Here is a short quote from the text. The late Italian architect and theorist Aldo Rossi, by the way, one of the favorite of my father, famously described the horror of architectural destruction brought home through the personal witness of the wartime violence. He wrote, Anyone who remembers European cities after the bombing of the last war retains an image of disemboweled houses where, amid the rubble, fragments of familiar places remained standing, with their colors of faded wallpaper, laundry hanging suspended in the air, the untidy intimacy of places. The image of a half room with doors opening onto canyons and interiors exposed to the unforgiving elements as well as an equally callous public view is even more tragic for its comics resemblance to the classic cutaway room of a movie set, whose missing fourth wall is occupied by the crew and production equipment, invisible stand scene for the audience, which will later occupy this torn away space. The differences are obvious and not so funny. The family of the bombed apartment cannot reoccupy it. They do not act their lives to a pain public. In contrast, the fourth wall is essential to the happy domestic life of fantasy. I was in Paris walking through the city. Along the banks of the Seine, I saw and photographed an image that has become for me the representation or metaphor of this phrase so simple and so strong. A kind of hole or tunnel entrance along the river was closed by a blanket that served as a door. Clearly the refuge, or if you will, the home of someone who could not have a so-called normal one. Despite the visible poverty, it was an elegant image, reminiscent of certain 19th century paintings, probably on display at the Louvre. The owner of this space was maybe one of the many people who, due to conflicts, had to leave their country to take refuge in a Europe that would not want to have it here. Maybe one of the many people who has lost its fourth wall and its essentiality for a happy domestic life. Space simulation based on the idea of living together. Who is present? the movements of shadows on the wall, the beauty of flowers, everything is leading to the perfect diameter of utopia. But it's a failure, like a failure was the attempt made with certainty to understand, something about privilege, reality and daily efforts. In 2018, I went to Sao Paulo for the first time, also the only one so far. Sao Paulo is the perfect example of a mega city. On Wikipedia, it is described as follows. The metropolis is an alpha global city, as listed by the GAWC, and the most populous city in Brazil, the Americas, the Western Hemisphere, and the Southern Hemisphere. In Sao Paulo, you can see people living on the street practically everywhere. Often, too much, their homes, if you can call them that, are a blanket with which they cover themselves while sleeping on a sidewalk. This sight struck me strongly. Homeless people are in many cities I have visited, in Berlin too. But people who have nothing but this blanket that no longer represents the fourth wall. 
because the other three are not there anyway. Sao Paulo is also a city where the infrastructure provides space for cultural resistance. Here, a spontaneous group like Slam Resistencia meets regularly above the entrance to a tunnel on one of the city's highways to recite and listen to poetry. More than irrevocably desperate, central, narcissistic, the city was a place of rescue. New 20-story buildings, owned by modern corporations. In city center, the weather changes through incessant variation designed to avoid liminal people in time and space. Major groups strategically responded comfortably going by foot on adjacent infrastructures. Still appeared over intersected beauties, the first to be decorated. Probably one of the most beautiful urban experiences I've had was walking on the Minyokao. The elevated highway that passes just a few meters from the windows of the houses to end up under Roosevelt Square, where the Slam Resistencia meets. The Minyokao is a 2.2 mile elevated highway which was inaugurated in 1971, by the way the same year in which Omega Man was released. The road is named after the Minyokao, a quasi-fictitious earthworm-like creature and nowadays is closed to car traffic between 8 p.m. and 7 a.m. on weekdays and all day on Saturdays and Sundays, allowing dedicated use by pedestrians and cyclists. A perfect example of how urban infrastructure can provide concrete and space for free and public use, almost a utopia. Ever a complex viewpoint sharpened over the pandemonium of existing objects is a vantage point, not a solution, over a rising variety of new locations, near or distant, controlled by precise rules, displaced and cropped, the future and the trope. Berlin is a city that, like many other metropolises, is changing rapidly following neoliberalistic market laws and offering less and less attention to the needs of its inhabitants. In a few days, there will be another demonstration to protest against the disproportionate increase in rents, one of the characteristics of the infamous contemporary gentrification. Henri Lefebvre wrote in 1996 two sentences that I think are very famous. The right to the city manifests itself as a superior form of rights, right to freedom, to individualization and socialization, to habitat and to inhabit. The right to the oeuvre, to participation and appropriation, clearly distinct to the right of property, are implied in the right to the city. And it is the right to the city, the right that we ask to be respected. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next week to hear work by multidisciplinary artist Sean Solis. <laughs>